What's going on, Notre Dame fans? Mike Singer and Tyler Horka on the Blue and Gold YouTube channel discuss some Notre Dame football news. I am back from vacation, uh, so there was no YouTube content last week on the channel, but we'll be back all week, Wednesday show, Friday show, uh, Monday, Tuesday videos here, so uh, we'll have you locked and loaded. Um, so please, folks, hit the thumbs up on this video. Of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content. BlueandGold.com is your home for all things Notre Dame football. So definitely wanted to start with some of the recent coaching news, um, Tyler, because when I was out last week, a lot happened. Uh, you had uh, reports. And look, Notre Dame being a private institution doesn't have to report like you know, you don't get Notre Dame salaries or, or you know, those contracts like you do at the public schools. Um, but you guys reported uh, Al Golden extension, Dylan McCullough promotion. Let's just start there. Uh, if you can run through those quickly, Tyler, um, some, again, some pretty big news right there with, with, with Notre Dame keeping those guys. Yeah, once Notre Dame got its offensive coordinator situation wrapped up as quickly as it did, if you remember, Mike Denbrock was in place before Notre Dame even played in the Sun Bowl at the end of December. That was huge. It was all eyes on Al Golden at that point because we knew that the NFL coaching carousel was going to be just as crazy as that of college football, and that ended up being the case. I mean, look at Jim Harbaugh, wins a national championship. Now he's in the NFL. We're about to talk about Chris O'Leary, who is intertwined in all of that, the now former Notre Dame safeties coach. But like I said, once Denbrock was in place, it was all eyes on Al Golden because there was some real rumblings and maybe some thoughts by people who actually are in the know that Golden might want to go back to the NFL. He's no spring chicken anymore. He did great job at the Notre Dame in the last couple of years. I mean, Notre Dame had one of the five to 10 best defenses in college football this past season. So you kind of ride that momentum, right? When your name is hot, that's when you're able to jump to these other opportunities. And he really could have gone back to the NFL if he wanted, maybe be a defensive coordinator. Of course, he was the linebackers coach at Cincinnati when they went to the Super Bowl a couple of years ago and lost to the Rams. So, you know, he had everything on the table. So for Notre Dame to give him the, the contract extension that he got, which is for four years, that obviously probably comes with some money. Like you were saying, Mike, we don't know how much more money that is because that's something that Notre Dame will never reveal as a private institution. But what we did know and what we were able to confirm at blueandgold.com is that it is a four-year contract. And what does that mean? It doesn't mean Golden's going to be here for four years, but it shows that Notre Dame is willing to have him here for four years. And I thought that was a really big thing uh, for the Fighting Irish, given how good he has been as Notre Dame's defensive coordinator and just trying to keep a hold of him, which they did in a crazy off-season coaching carousel cycle. And Dylan McCullough added, what, assistant head coach. So that's a pay bump for him as well. Yep. And that's, I mean, that's another guy who could be an offensive coordinator here at some big program, or maybe he starts small and then eventually gets to the power five level, but he has offensive coordinator written all over him. So for Notre Dame to retain him as running backs coach and slap that extra title on there, like you said, comes with a little extra money, comes with some authoritative power though, too. So he is Notre Dame's associate head coach right now, and he's he's a guy on the rise. Notre Dame, they, they have a coaching staff full of dudes who are on the rise and could have plenty of jobs elsewhere. And, and I guess we're about to get into that with Chris O'Leary, right? He, he just got yeah. a job elsewhere. Yeah, a couple quick thoughts on those two things. I mean, the, the, working with Lou Saboji, I always learned so much, and he would always tell me it's like three years for an assistant coach is kind of shelf life because you're either getting an OC job or you're not cutting it and you're and you're leaving or you have a head coach change. I feel like that's gone from three to like two years um, just yeah. because the coaching carousel is just crazier than ever. So for Notre Dame to get Golden and McCullough, uh, guys who could get you know promotions elsewhere, uh, to get them for a third season, I think that's huge. But I, I wrote this in an article at Blue and Gold Sunday. I was like, this might not be a popular opinion, but – Golden getting this extension at the end of the day, it, it, it's, it's nice news to kind of like make you feel a lot more comfortable that he's going to be here for the third season. But other than that, it might mean Notre Dame gets a better buyout, you know, if, or when he gets uh, poached by some other, you know, school, like you, you could see him getting a head coaching job elsewhere or, um, you know, uh, go back to the NFL as a coordinator. So, uh, and then wanted to touch on, yeah, Chris O'Leary, um, Probably not the first guy you would have thought of to, you know, leave for um, the NFL. But, um, you know, he has a relationship with, uh, you know, Jim Harbaugh's defensive coordinator that he brought to the Chargers. 
Yep. And that's, I would say, a big reason why he's there. But then let's face it, at the beginning of the 2023 Notre Dame season, Chris O'Leary was under some fire, mostly from fans, just because of the recruiting at that position and and maybe some of the production or lack thereof at that position. Like I said a little bit earlier, when you're hot, you're hot. And Xavier Watts became one of the best safeties in college football. Some may say the best safety led the NCAA with seven interceptions, won the Bronco Nagurski Trophy. You can tie that back to some of Chris O'Leary's teachings. And I really think that O'Leary and um, Mike Mickens did an excellent job coaching the Notre Dame secondary the, the last couple of seasons. Like their tag team, you could just tell they had a really good chemistry. Mike, you could speak to the recruiting element of that more. But I, I thought they were – when they went out and they wanted a DB or an athlete or anyone like that, they were gonna, they were going to go get them and they would work together to get that guy. So now you have Mike Mickens – I think this is an interesting spot for him, kind of leading the entire Notre Dame secondary. He was the cornerbacks coach, and now he is also coaching the safety. So that'll be interesting to see. Obviously, he's probably going to get a lot of help from some grad assistants and some analysts and stuff like that. And that leads into the other part of this. When Al Golden was defensive coordinator this past season and the season before that, he had a grad analyst helping him out big time. It was James Laurinaitis in 2022. This past season, it was Max Bola. And now Max Bola is Notre Dame's linebackers coach. So some internal shuffling there in terms of titles and who's doing what and whatnot. But I think the continuity is there. And Mike, Max Bola is a guy that was going to be a linebackers coach at some institution at some point in the very near future. And for Notre Dame to have him, an NFL veteran, uh, a Michigan State grad who played four excellent years of college football up the road, he's getting his first start as a linebackers coach in South Bend. I think that is in, in all of these moves that kind of went on that's a really sneaky good one for Notre Dame yeah so you get 10 assistant coaches and a head coach obviously Uh, so Notre Dame replacing O'Leary not with another safety coach like Tyler mentioned it's not official yet it's interesting because this this news broke what eight days ago and it's been very quiet uh, because you know blue and gold and other outlets were like listen we this is kind of what we're hearing behind the scenes what is going to happen uh, Max Bull is going to get that promotion. It's like when Lauren Nidus left for Ohio State, his alma mater is like, man, Notre Dame doesn't really have a position for him open, but you would have liked to see that happen with the Irish getting this opportunity. Now they were going to let that happen again with Bola, who I think did yeah. a really good job, just as good of a job as James Lauren Nidus did in his season at South Bend. So you get Bola to linebackers coach, Mickens coach of secondary. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens when this is official. Um, I, I had one person mention to me that, you know, maybe – golden coaches safeties but i don't know we'll see golden regardless the 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 whole analyst thing and and grad assistants they're going to help coach those positions and golden's going to have a ceo role as the defensive coordinator as he's had the past couple of seasons didn't want to just mention quickly that al washington was um, a finalist for the boston college head coaching position he's a a a bc alum Uh, bill o'brien got that job but we're not going to dive into that too much in this video we'll do that another time Um, but, uh, since we're a little bit short on time for this video, but, uh, Keon Sab, a Michigan safety, it was reported by on threes, Hayes Fawcett, uh, that Sab has heard from these 18 schools since entering the transfer portal, um, and Notre Dame listed on there. So Sab totaled 28 tackles, two picks and had four passes defended in 2023. Uh, he of course is able to enter the transfer portal because of Michigan's head coach opening, um, how much Notre Dame is really going to be in the mix for Sab? Was it really just getting the feelers out there? I don't know. But I, I, instead of diving into Sab specifically, just curious, like, do you think Notre Dame could use another safety? Like, do you think this would be a good get? Because Rod Hurd from Northwestern didn't really play true safety for the Wildcats. I think that's what this is about. Like, you think that you have a guy in Rod Hurd that can play that other safety spot opposite of Xavier Watts? but you're not really sure. And I'm looking at the scholarship chart that we have at blueandgold.com uh, 2024 scholarship chart. You have Xavier Watts, you have Rod Hurd. Those are the only two upperclassmen, if you will. Those are the guys that have one year of eligibility left. They're going to play football in 2024 and then they're done. Every other player that we have listed as a safety on the scholarship chart has four years of college eligibility left. And Mike, you know more about some of these guys than I do because there's a lot of true freshmen on this list. Uh, Tay Johnson, Tabron Benny Powell, Kennedy Erlacher, they're your true freshmen. And then, of course, Adon Schuler and Ben Minnick are redshirt freshmen. They're going into their uh, sophomore academic years. So 
I think a Don Schuler is going to step up and be a really good player for Notre Dame. It seems like that's the kind of path that he's on, but you're not quite sure. That's a little bit speculative right now. So you, you hope that he becomes that player. But if Rod Hurd is not that player, and then a Don Schuler isn't that player as a second year guy, you would love to have a guy like Keon Sab, who, like you said, Mike, he had some statistics there at Michigan. The, the number that jumps out to me, he started five games for the Wolverines on a championship roster. I mean, these guys just went 15 and 0, won the national championship, and Keon Sab started one third of those games. So it's depth at a position that Notre Dame could really use it. And then also it's experience at a position that Notre Dame could really use it. Now, one note is this is he's going into his junior year. So I don't know how that would work academically. You don't really see Notre Dame to take too many undergrads. Um, but no. when they're able to do it, it's from a, like Northwestern. And even Riley Leonard is coming to Notre Dame without, without you know having a bachelor's degree. So maybe that could work with Keon Sab coming from Michigan. It's a good school. Um, so that's that's something to keep an eye on. But uh, again, Keon Sab mentioned that Notre Dame did reach out. So uh, folks, please do hit the thumbs up on this video. Subscribe to our, uh, our channel here for more content. Blueandgold.com is your home for all things Notre Dame fighting Irish football. Again, thank you for watching, folks. And as always, we will catch you next time.